Welcome to the Fishing Duo channel. Thanks for joining us. My name is Josh. That was a long walk, but thankfully I had a Schmitty sled. And if you don't know what that is, we're going to show you because it makes ice fishing a lot easier. Not only am I going to show you how to make one, I'm going to show you how to customize it so it helps improve your angling skills. So let's rewind time a bit, go back to the garage when I made this sled and I'll show you how it's done. All right, we are back in the garage and we're about to get started on this Schmitty sled. But before we do, we need to go over all the materials you're gonna need to get it done. The first thing you're gonna need is a sled. You could get away with using any sled, but I use the Otter Sport sled. This is the small size, measures about 21 inches wide and 43 inches long. Perfect size for everything I need, but they do make larger ones and you could even get away with using a storage bin or you could make your own custom wood rack. But either way, you're gonna need something to hold your gear. For the next item on the list, you're gonna to wanna to find a two to three foot piece of two by four. This is gonna make up the support that connects the skis to the struts. For the struts, we've got a one by four piece of cedar fencing. Plenty of strength and it's gonna work just fine for our needs. Now most sleds come with some rope for pulling it. But in most cases, it's garbage. Throw it out. Instead, get yourself some poly rope. This happens to be quarter inch. It's durable, it's flexible, handles the cold really well. Much nicer on your hands. A better all around rope. And of course, there is no Smitty sled without a pair of skis. The set here, I picked up at my local thrift store for less than 20 bucks. You can find them virtually anywhere secondhand. The important thing to remember though, is that you get downhill skis. Downhill skis are smooth both directions. Cross country skis on the other hand have a textured surface on the bottom that prevents them from sliding backwards. It's not something you necessarily want on your Schmitty sled. Lengthwise, this is 51 inches. Um, for my sled it's perfect. You need to really get a pair that's roughly 8 to 12 inches longer than your sled but not really long because otherwise maneuverability is difficult. To complete your smitty sled, you're gonna need a few more items. Two carabiners for quickly attaching the tow rope to the sled, eight three inch screws for attaching the skis to the supports, eight two inch screws for attaching the struts to the supports, and four quarter inch bolts for attaching the sled to the struts. In addition, you can add a piece of half or three quarter inch PVC pipe to your tow rope for a more comfortable handle. And if you want to make things look real sleek, you can use a can of spray paint to paint the struts and the supports whatever color you want. It's finally time to start building our Schmitty sled. And the first thing we got to do is cut these four two by four supports that connect the skis to the struts. You can see on this one that I built last year, I gave it a bit of a taper. I did that just because I like the look of it. You could just as easily Square cut a piece of two by four and it'll work just as good. My cuts are at a 22 and a half degree angle, but use any taper that looks good to you. I also made the top of the support three and a half inches wide so it would match up nicely to the width of the strut that goes on top. We really only have a couple more cuts to make and that is on the struts. Now the struts, you have a little bit of flexibility because you can make it as wide as you want. It really depends on what you're trying to achieve. If you want more gear storage, say for a pop-up that goes along the side, if you don't want to stick it in your sled, make it wider. It's really up to you. Just be aware that the width of the skis determines how good you're going to be able to really maneuver that sled. For the purpose of our sleds, I like it to be about the width of the sled itself. So the skis are flush with the edge of the sled. That means my strut, I'm going to cut to about 17 and a half inches for this sled. Again, just adapt that for whatever sled you've got. We've made all our cuts, and now is the time to figure out exactly where we want our supports to be attached to these skis. But before we get to that point, we gotta get these bindings off. You don't need them on the sled. With the skis prepped, it's now time to start positioning everything on the skis. Not only where the supports are going on the skis, but where the sled is positioned along its length. Ideally, you want more ski sticking out front then out the back. Right now we have the ski roughly flush with the back. You also need to think about where the struts are gonna be placed under the sled so that it provides the maximum amount of support possible to the gear you're gonna put inside. Once you're happy with it, I like the way this one looks, we're ready to mark on one of the skis 
exactly where we want that support to go. Just use a piece of masking tape or painter's tape and mark the front and rear front edges of the supports. And now you can duplicate that by measuring on the other ski. Use the back edge of the ski as a guide to measure out the supports placement and mark it with some tape. Then mark the middle of the ski and position each support at that spot. Now just run a piece of tape along the edge on one side. The hard part is done. We know exactly where those supports are gonna go on these skis. So we can drill a couple holes, countersink them, and that'll be where the screws go through and attach that support to the ski. But before we do that, it's time to get painting. We got the paint drying and in the meantime we can drill out these skis for where the supports are going to mount onto it. The exact placement of the holes isn't critical. You just want to make sure you grab enough meat on the block here that you get a good firm attachment. Now that we've got those holes drilled in the place we want them, we need to countersink. On the underside, we're going to use a countersink bit in order to allow that screw head to sit flush with the ski. Otherwise it'll act like a big spike dragging around on the ice and add some resistance when you're pulling your sled. All right, the paint has dried and it's ready for the fun part, attaching the supports. Like I said before, the most important thing is getting these supports placed exactly right. That's what's going to make this sled track straight and be easy to pull. So that's why we got this taped out. We can put this support right where we need it. Get a clamp on there. And once it's clamped in place, all we've got to do is pre-drill and use our two three inch screws to tighten that support down. We got all four supports attached and we are probably at the most critical stage at this point. And that is getting the struts in just the right spot. It may seem simple, but the important thing is that we get the skis lined up from rear to tip and parallel. Otherwise your sled will go off to the side as you try to pull it. So take the time to get it lined up right the first time. Once you get it lined up, like by using the end of this table as a guide for the rear of the skis, they're lined up this way now. Get your struts on there where you think they go and measure across at an angle. We got 30 inches there. And if it's lined up, it should be the same and we've got 30 inches there. So this is about as close as I'm gonna be able to get it and I'm happy with that at this point. So now we can fasten the struts onto the supports, we're going to pre-drill two holes and use our two inch screws to fasten down that strut to the support. As you can see, the bulk of the work is done. It is this component right here that turns any regular ice fishing sled into a Schmitty sled. All that's left is to get the sled onto the struts here. You have a few options for attaching this sled to the struts so that you have a durable, sturdy Schmitty sled. Your first choice, you could use itty bitty little screws and just go straight through the sled into the struts. For me, that's just not strong enough. I prefer using bolts. That requires drilling a quarter inch hole through the sled into the struts and tightening this down. That is a rock solid attachment. Alternatively, if you prefer to be able to remove the sled without punching holes through it so that you can use it as a regular sled, you're going to want to use something like a bungee to attach it to the sled and maybe to a couple eye bolts so that you can get some reasonable connection to the skis but still be able to take it apart if you want to. I've got my sled lined up just how I want it and like I said, I'm opting for attaching it using four bolts for the most stable, solid sled I can think of making.
Just like that, we got the sled locked down tight, but we still need a way to pull it across the ice, so we got to attach a rope. But on a Schmitty sled, it's a little bit different, so I'm going to show you the best way to get that done. The normal way to hook a rope to an ice fishing sled is through these pre-drilled holes here, but on a Schmitty sled, you're going to want to put the rope here. That way when you pull, it gives you some lift and lets you ride right over the top of snow and slush. With the hole drilled, we can take a short length of rope to create a loop. Then we can attach our tow rope with a carabiner. With that step done, we can now hook up the tow rope to these carabiners. The length of your rope is entirely up to you. Personally, I prefer about the length of my sled. That way I'm only about five to six feet out in front of my sled. In addition, if you wanted to use that optional handle I talked about, you can use a PVC pipe like this. I pre-drilled a couple holes. That way the rope routes right through it and I can tie a couple knots to lock it in place so I'm always pulling straight on the sled. If you don't want the handle, and you prefer to use something like a deer dragging harness, just take a couple lengths of rope, tie loops in the end, use another carabiner and hook it right to the harness and you're all set. Well, we've got the tow rope tied up, we've got the sled bolted down to the skis. For all intents and purposes, this sled is ready to go ice fishing. But instead, think of it like a blank slate because next up, we get to start customizing. Let's take a look at my other sled to give you some ideas. Customizing your Schmitty sled is the best part, and you can really get creative. Keep in mind that your sled isn't just something you use to drag your gear out onto the ice. It's actually a valuable tool to help you catch more fish, so don't skimp on the features. Things like a rod holder are essential for keeping your rods organized and ready to go. I also added this custom shelf for my hummingbird sonar, and it even has a spot for my underwater camera. Another handy feature is this spud bar holder, so it never gets left behind. Think of what works for you and just go for it because now we're finally going to test it out on the ice. Thanks again for joining us on this Fishing Duo episode. I really hope it was useful for you. And if you found it added value to your fishing, please consider subscribing. Hit that like button, hit the bell, and it would really help us out. If not, you know what? We're just glad you joined us. And if you want to check out more awesome content about fishing, you want to learn some new stuff, check out our blog at fishingduo.com, and we'll see you on the ice.